Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for EVE Echoes. Now this time around, things are going to be significantly different. This is actually the first video I've recorded since the EVE Echoes beta closed, and it's just to have a look at the open beta test data report that the uh, developers have published, just to go through this, talk about it, and what it all means. Now this means it is a little bit drier, less sort of flashy and bangy than some of my previous videos, but I do hope it's something that you enjoy. We're going to go through it anyway. Let's let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Of course, if you're liking this com uh, content and other Eve Echoes content, do let me know by liking this video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and either commenting down below in the comment section or by finding me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and on Discord. Details are on screen and in the description. Anyway, let's jump right in. So what you should be seeing on screen now is the EVE Echoes Open Beta Test Data Report, which is essentially a load of interesting facts and figures that the developers have given us about the beta. So I just wanted to have a look and talk through what all of this means um, and just give my thoughts on it. So starting off with part one, we have ISK. Now ISK obviously is the main currency in the game, so this is how people were making it and how people were using it. Now interestingly here, when you have a look at ISK output, which is how people were making ISK, um, most of this came from mission rewards or pri uh, pirate bounty. I almost said private's bounty. <laughs> That's a very different thing. Um, there was about 3% from the logistics subsidy. That would probably be higher if they hadn't changed it and pretty much removed it and thus made logistics and hauling pretty much worthless. But certainly the vast majority came from mission rewards and pirate bounty, which means a lot of people were ratting and doing combat encounters, which doesn't at all surprise me. That was the main source of income there. Now, the little bit you can't see because it's hidden behind logistic subsidy, subsidy is inheritance, which is kind of the money you get at the very beginning of the game, um, which makes sense. System transfer is also market transactions. That's selling stuff. That's where people made money. So people will make, you know, less than a third was system transfer was making money on the market. Less than a third was the mission rewards. The only thing significantly was the pirate bounties. What were we spending all of that isk on? Well, here, according to this pie chart, um, the vast majority went on purchasing skills. As you can see throughout the beta, some of those skills were very, very expensive. Um, I don't expect that to be reeled in. That, to me, is perfect. That's how it should be. NPC orders, um, that's basically your kind of, like buying things from uh, the market that was seeded there. Things like ships and blueprints that the developers put in there for us to buy. Um, certainly things like some of the frigates and destroyers, you can just go into a, into a market and they're there no matter how many people are selling them. Um, then things like the broker's fee and market transaction tax, that shows where ISK was, being di was disappearing there into the system. Um, basically that shows that a fair amount of money actually was spent on the market buying things from other people as well. That broker's fee and market transaction tax does show that it's a fairly healthy market. Ideally, I'd like to see that a bit higher and I imagine it will be once things get going um, in Echoes and we're out of beta and things, you know, the market really starts growing. I'd expect those to be closer to sort of the 20% uh, the mark on both of them. Anyway, KM, which is kill metrics. So let's have a look at this. This is, as far as I'm aware, ships that uh, kills that were performed by ships. So you can see here that the vast majority of ships, in fact, um, that were destroying things were frigates, which actually doesn't surprise me that much. It's more than I thought. I thought destroyers would be bigger um, than frigates, which are nearly half of all the ships being used. Destroyers coming in a little under a third. Cruisers way down at 14%. I suppose that's because ultimately there were so many problems people were having with getting turrets to track properly and thus cruisers weren't really doing all that great. Um, destroyers though I genuinely thought would be bigger and industry ships. I honestly thought the industry ships were going to be smaller than that. Um, of course battleships and battle cruisers were a minute statistic because almost no one reached tier uh, tech level 8. Now, how did people? Uh, how were people killing? Most of the ships killed were, of course, in PVE, player versus environment engine. Um, PVP, obviously that's player versus player. Every time you blow up a hapless miner or something, that would have counted in that blue area. Um, but PVPVE, player versus player versus environment, I assume that's jumping into someone's combat anomaly and blowing them out of the sky while they're trying to do a mission, at which point that 10% I can kind of refer to as the hilarity slice. Uh, KM of ship resistance. In this case, you can see that shield and armor were kind of the main ones here. Uh, most of the ships killed were shield tanks um, or armor tanks. Surprisingly, a surprising large amount of none. I assume that's possibly things like rats. 
um, where maybe they were hull tanking for the most part. I, I genuinely don't quite understand this one. Again, let me know in the comment section below if you understand that one a bit better than I do. Now let's have a look over here at K uh, KM Regions. This is where most of the killing was happening. And interestingly enough, I'm actually quite surprised by this. Most of it happened in Lone Trek 27272. That's a lot of kills. In, in one such area. Now, I was in uh, Maspa, which is in Derelict. That was only 2,405. Very, very like quiet area con uh, con in consideration. Jita is in the Forge, which is 15,723. Um, so that was fairly active, as suppose pirating and you know going ratting and combat anomalies around there makes sense. Tash Mercon there for Amar is quite a big one. Domain, obviously, Central Amar. There's a lot of people going around uh, Central Amar. Um, which is quite interesting. Black Rise, also fairly quite high. Metropolis, that's uh, Minmatar. The Citadel, Sink Lazon. These, those are kind of the bits you'd expect. Lone Trek, to me, just seems a really weird one to stand out. And looking around at things like Scalding Pass, Inns Mother, Great Wildlands, Curse, uh, Curse, Catch, Venal, all of these are Nullsec. It shows that actually there wasn't all that much going on out in Nullsec. People weren't really destroying a whole ton of stuff. Um, whether that's PvP or PvE, you know, it, 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 there's less kills going on there than I thought. Black Rise, by the way, that 7066 is going to be massively inflated, of course, with the developer event, as that took place in Black Rise. Every ship that got destroyed there, that would count towards Black Rise. Now let's have a look at the tech level statistics. What tech level were most of the ships? Now, if we look at it, tech level zero, um, 1,123 corvettes were killed. That's actually not that many. Um, 99,731 tech level one ships. That's surprising. I wouldn't have expected that to be quite so low, uh, quite so high, sorry. I would have expected tier two or tier three to be the biggest height there because tech one, those are some really quite basic ships. Um, you're, you're not even looking at things like rifters. Rifters, I think, fall in under tech two as well. Um, but as you'd expect from there on, things do decline down. Tech level 8, obviously, is battle cruisers um, and upwards. Tech 9, no one really had those, so it doesn't really count. Tech level 8 and lower. Um, it, it doesn't surprise me. I do I do honestly think I, it's weird that tech level 1 is so high. I would have thought 2 or 3 would have been higher than 1. I suppose, again, if this counts rats, that would explain that. KM of Ship Faction. Now, this I found hilarious. Sons of Eden, only 18. Uh, sorry, Sisters of Eden, 18. Gurus, the 609. Angel, Serpentis, Interbus. And then, whack. 19,277 ore ships. That's your uh, things like your retrievers and your ventures. That's a lot of mining ships being blown up. And that doesn't surprise me that that's our first big jump. Now, interestingly here, Kaldari, Galente, Minmatar, and Amar, of course, you expect these to be quite high. Pleased to see that Minmatar pilots weren't being blown up all that much. We're just too good, you know, you know, it's it's hard to blow us up. People know to fly away. But Jove? Really? What constitutes a Jove ship in Echoes, I wonder? Because that's an awful lot of ships to be blown up for what is a tiny faction in EVE Online, comparatively. So, interestingly there to see though, Kaldari ships, obviously a lot of Kaldari ships going around. I imagine a lot of those were Caracals as well, um, but I, I do like to see that the Minmatar ones, it's not that they were less popular, it's that they were piloted by more skilled people, obviously. Uh, KM of ship weapon type. Missiles, surprisingly low. Projectiles, fairly high. This has definitely got to be including rats, because that none is going to be things like, uh, I, I imagine things like logistic ships um, and E-war ships that you see out in a lot of those rat encounters. Drones, fairly low. Hybrid, very high. And energy, surprisingly high. Again, notice that projectile is actually the lowest of those other than missiles and drones. So I'm assuming this has to include rats because I don't actually recall seeing any drone rats. And missile rats, they were in every group, but only in small numbers. Um, projectiles, as you can see, energy there. Hybrid. The nun confuses me. I'm not sure what that nun is, because actually, as I've come across here, remote shield booster, remote armor repairer, I suppose those are weapons, yeah. So things like the E-warships wouldn't count. They would be your nuns. Uh, mining lasers and strip miners, though, do count as weapons. So that's interesting to see that those don't count under nun either. So, crikey, I'm not sure what that nun is. I'm going to ignore that. But there's a lot of hybrid weapon ships being blown up. 
Now, under economy, let's have a look. Business transaction statistics in the millions. That's a lot. Now, this is basically how transactions were done. Now, obviously, a lot of money being made, uh, being spent on ships and on modules. Um, that d is not at all surprising. People wanting to try out multiple different ships or getting a ship blown up and wanting to replace it. Modules, of course, if you're buying ships, you need to be buying modules as well. Um, and some of those were selling for ludicrous amounts on the market. Um, drones. Drones being so low does not at all surprise me, simply because y nothing really shot at drones. Um, when I got my worm, I put four of each drone type in it. I lost one drone in the entire beta, and that was in one PvP action against Alex the Master. If you've watched that video, um, I, would be, I put it up briefly for my Patreon, for my Discord supporters. Um, it will be coming out later. Alex the Master was the only person who actually took out any of my drones in the beta, which meant I never needed to buy them. I bought them that once, and then every time I used a different ship, I just transferred them from my worm into my Vexor, or my Vexor into what, you know, whatever. I think I literally bought the four uh, faction drones for, e four of each of the faction drones for my worm, and I think I bought some of the medium ones as well for my Vexor, and that was it. Common goods, um, those are like your mission stuff, I believe. Uh, accessories, materials, planet materials, of course those you'd expect to be fairly high. Um, planet materials, obviously not that many sold actually, that's a little bit lower than I'd expected because mining materials were easy to get, the planetary materials obviously being time bound, I assumed more people would be buying those. Um, but there we go, ship blueprints very low on the market as well as were module blueprints, which in this case I'm assuming mean rigs, because I don't recall there being any actual module blueprints, I don't recall there being blueprints for actual turrets um, or armor repairs and that kind of thing. But that that's surprising actually, you know, I, I would have expected, as I said, the planet materials to be much higher than the materials just because people would be wanting to buy those more. Let's have a look at tech level. So how many players were under each tech level? Well, obviously they're the tier one, tech one. I think those are the people who started the beta. Uh, those are the people who I started making my videos for. Those are the guys who started the beta, got so confused by it all, it looks like they quit. Tech level two were the ones who pushed a little bit further before getting confused and stopping. Three, the ones who pushed even further. To me, that seems to suggest that those who hit tech four that was kind of the open door point. If you hit Tech 4, you stuck around a bit longer, as you can see by Tech 5 and Tech 6. Now, Tech 7 and Tech 8, you either had to have been in the alpha or been around from quite early on in the beta to uh, push all the way up into Tech Level 8. You'd have needed to have a lot of those, uh, like the server downtime bonuses or the Christmas and New Year bonuses where you got like a million or two million extra skill points to spend. That pushed most people up into Tier 7 or Tier 8. Um, tier 9, interesting to see, nobody reached that. There just obviously wasn't enough time to reach that. Now in regards to refining reprocessing statistics in the thousands, how much did we have reprocessed in scrap metal? Almost nothing. Nobody bothered reprocessing scrap metal. Veldspar and Scordite, though, both huge. Of course, a lot of people are making those. You always need Veldspar, you always need Scordite. That kind of makes sense. Good to see those. Pyrexeres is surprisingly low, as was Plagioclase, uh, surprisingly high. Omber and Kernite, that little bit lower. Then interestingly here, you've got this random little spike down here at about what I think is, if I recall correctly, about... I think that's right the way... that's below. That's Nullsec. That's early Nullsec, though. Spodumane, Dark Ochre, and Nice. Uh, nice. That's, I think, like 0.2... 0.2 sec, 2 sec down to like minus 3, I think. Someone will correct me on that. But it shows that there were some people who were out in what I would refer to as station null sec. They flew, uh, flew out to null sec, they found a, an area that had a station in it, an ITC, um, and then would just go out mining from there. That's where you get most of those kind of ores. Um, so that's an interesting little spike there. Veldspar and Scordite, you'd expect to be that high. Interesting that Pyroxeres was so low, but yeah, there we are. Manufacturing. What were people manufacturing? Frigates. Yes, of course, a lot of people making frigates. That doesn't surprise me at all. There are so many different frigates in the game, from things like hounds to dromiels to worms, and just to other things like uh, your rifters and your herons, that kind of thing. Destroyers, again, doesn't surprise me that that's so high. That was your thrashers, your thrasher twos, your coercer twos, uh, navy issue, that kind of thing. Um, cruisers, again, lots of people were making and using cruisers. Not at all surprising. Very few battle cruisers. Battleships, I find that hilarious. 
there were people making battleships despite the fact that no one ever got to use them. As we saw earlier, no one reached Tech 9. Battleships were Tech 9. Two battleships were made. If, if you're watching my video and you were one of the people who made that battleship, please flag yourself. Um, industry ships, that's going to be your ventures and retrievers. That's a lot lower than I thought it would be. Like, genuinely, industry ships I thought would be actually higher um, higher than destroyers. It is higher than destroyers, but to be beaten by frigates. I thought industry ships would probably be the top, in fairness. But actually, looking back on it, I'm, I'm massively overestimating the previous ones. That, to me, actually does make sense. The more I'm talking about it, the more I'm realising it's more than destroyers, but less than frigates. And considering how many frigates there are, that, that kind of makes sense to me. And rigs, yeah... Doesn't surprise me that rigs were so effective um, in money making as so many people were making them. The blueprints were fairly easy to get if you were doing the tier, uh, right tier combat anomalies. Um, and they sold for millions. They sold for way too much during the beta. Um, they were probably one of the better money makers out there. Let's have a look then at logistics. Oh boy. Logistics cargo hold volumes that is. Logistics cargo volumes. Um, let's zoom in so we can see that a bit more. Crikey, that's absolutely atrocious. That just shows how poor logistics actually was. That basically it's the smaller stuff that people were using and just going from there. Um, I'll be honest, that data at the bottom confuses me slightly. Um, I think there's an error in how that's being uh, displayed. But certainly that does insinuate that it was just the small containers that were being shipped. And even then, not all that many in comparison. That's, that's surprisingly worrying million meters cubed it just shows that there weren't many people doing transporting at all no very few haulers in the beta mining what were the main thing uh, main areas being mined well the forge appears to come out right on the top of that list yes it does so that's people going to jita and just forming the farming the area around it derelict that's again where masper is and um, so 1265 people around there uh, Veil of the Silent, a lot of the Null Sec is very low. Lone Trek again, surprisingly high. Tash Mercon, the Citadel, Sync Lazon, uh, Domain. Again, it seems Minmatar space was fairly quiet. Look at things like Metropolis, um, Morden, he uh, Morden Heath. Uh, where have you gone around here? Hymatar. Those are all much lower than the Amar and the Kaldari. So Minmatar space was nice and quiet. Might be worth mentioning that and just worth bearing that in mind when we come out of beta. Uh, when we come out of beta and into life, it might be worth heading down that way. Um, again, you can see here, just to talk there about uh, Black Rift, um, or Black Rise, sorry. Black Rise, obviously, is uh, where the where the dev, dev combat event took place, and we saw that there were loads of kills in that area, which could insinuate it's a very highly active area, but the fact that so little mining was done there shows that actually, no, it was a very quiet area that just happened to play stage to a very big event. Right, that's page one. Let's move on to data report page two. Anomalies by region. So, battle anomaly cleaning. Let's have a look at where most people were doing their anomalies. Lone Trek. Okay, that explains quite a few of the ship kills in that earlier. Lone Trek was a hotbed for it, as was the Forge. Sync lays on the Citadel. Domain. Metropolis, a lot higher in this one. Nice to see the bit of a Mars space being used there. Um, again, not overly much in the null sec regions those are a little bit lower some people are still doing those i mean veil of the silence fairly high great wildlands is fairly uh, fairly high immensity is nice and low very quiet no one really going out there molden heath curse catch venal yeah it looks like most people were sticking to high security throughout most of the beta advanced battle of normal cleaning above tech 5 Okay, now this is where obviously the Forge and Derelict fall right down because there just weren't many things around there. Uh, Geminate, Great Wildlands, Veil vale of the Silent, Syndicate apparently is where most people were out doing their ratting, um, or Fountain. Again, Black Rise has got a fair few out there, um, but Syndicate certainly seems to be the area that most people were going out to uh, do their high-level uh, advanced combat anomalies. Now, what about mining belts? <laughs> hey, there's Lone Trek and the Forge. So apparently Lone Trek and the Forge were just the two busiest areas in the beta in general. Domain fairly high. Metropolis surprisingly high compared to the others. Actually higher um, than some of the ones I'd expect it to be big, uh, lower than like compared to others. Tash Mercon, for example, and Derelict. Derelict, again, fairly quiet. Masper, if you want to come down there, that's an area I would wholeheartedly recommend. Um, Sync Lazon did fairly well there for mining belts as well. This is, I, by cleaning, I assume that's every time that an entire mining belt was cleared from start to finish. 
That's quite a few mining belts cleared. Um, advanced mining belts cleared. Again, this will be the ones that are further out. And the forge is still fairly high. Tribute, astonishingly high. Syndicate, again. Seems Syndicate is a very busy area for PvP, uh, sorry, for uh, both the combat anomalies and for mining belts. Um, I would possibly stay, uh, steer clear of Syndicate just because that is so busy. Bleakland certainly looks very quiet, as does Kador. Um, and at the end, Black Rise, again, a decent amount. What's Derelict like? Derelict actually surprisingly good. Derelict has some very nice uh, low level areas. Um, things like Berta, you can get from high second to null second, uh, high second to low second, two jumps from Masper, and it's not much further to get down into Nullsec. Let's have a look at Anomalies, all base cleaning. Now, there was a massive thing going on of people trying to desperately say, stop clearing bases. Bases are what spawn the other uh, other things there. Angels, not many of those. Blood Raiders, very few. Sancha, a few more. It looks like mainly Serpentis and Guristus bases were being destroyed. Um, again, not much in the higher level ones, people just picking off the low ones, although in fairness I only really saw low level ones, I don't remember seeing high level bases, so that would be a Y. Common, Abnomaly, Cleaning, Guristus, Tech Level 5 seems to be quite a big one. Angels again, Angel Cartel, almost no one out in Minmatar space cleaning those. Blood Raiders significantly higher than their bases, I mean check out that Blood Raider 7, that's very high, and Sancha 8. Sancha 8, Blood Raider 7, and Guristus 5. So it seems that people were out there really farming Blood Raiders um, and Sancha for those high-level anomalies. That, that's interesting. That's interesting that they went out of those particular areas of space. I wonder if there's any particular reason. Um, Sancha, I suppose, they're looking for the Sancha blueprints. If you're heading out that way and you're going to grab uh, like the blueprints and you're going to, for like the sucker bus and that, and then you're out to just do some ratting while you're there. I guess that kind of makes sense. Who knows? Inspector cleaning. Um, again, let's have a look at these. Gurustas Inspector, definitely the highest, followed by Serpentis, then Sancha. Angel actually does come in there, and uh, Blood Raiders Inspector. Now, by Inspector, I'm guessing they mean Inquisitor. Um, I'm guessing there's a translation error there. That's the Inquisitor Anomalies. Um, definitely Gurustas got the bigger there, and Gurustas, of course, being in Galactic Northwest. There's a lot going on there. It's close to Jita. It's close to like the Kaldari sort of stuff that we've seen a lot of already. Makes sense that that'd be one of our bigger active points. Then mining belt cleaning. Now where were these? Mining belt level four were the main ones being cleared. Uh, level ten ones actually surprisingly low, but higher than level nine. Um, definitely most people it seems were out in the uh, fourth, uh, like fourth level mining belts doing the cleaning there. Manufacturing, what were people manufacturing? Cruisers, destroyers, and frigates in that order. Again, industry ships and rigs. I feel like we've seen that on the previous page already. Um, I think a lot of this is now just doubling over. Logistics, yes we are. We've already seen. Mining, we've already seen. There we are, that, that does about wrap it up then. So those last ones are repeated. That's some interesting data. It shows that as expected, Kaldari space is the most is the busiest. Minmatar space, curiously, is the quietest by the looks of things. Um, lots of Kaldari ships and Galente ships and Amar ships and all that being used there. Minmatar being the lower one down there, or was actually a lot lower than I was expecting it to be, but still naturally quite high. I don't know. To me, I, I found this interesting just to have a look at and see what people were doing in the beta. It does help me plan what I would be doing ahead of time as well. Like By looking at how busy some of those areas are, um, gives you an idea of where you might fancy setting up base. Now, I've already decided where my corporation is going to be based and where I'm going to be based. Obviously, I'm not saying anything yet um, because I kind of want that to be where we end up. And I don't want a load of griefers running there and setting up shop first. But um, a base has been located and these statistics actually really back that up for me. Um, it looks like that area is going to be a really productive area and I'm basing that on how, uh, how quiet it is compared to others but how busy some of the nearby areas are. So I feel like I've put a really good pin in my star map um, so that I can be peacefully doing what I need to be doing whilst also uh, having a quick vantage point to springboard into other areas for some dramatic stuff going on there. So, I don't know. I, I hope you guys found this interesting too. To me, it's just intriguing to look through those stats, understand what's going on. As I said, it's letting me plan for the future. Um, I do hope that my information here might help you plan for the future as well. Of course, let me know in the comment section down below or on social media. You know the drill by now. 
Otherwise, well, more information coming as soon as we get it on when the development cycle may be ending, if we're getting a second phase of the beta, or if it's going to be going into live. Obviously, no release dates yet, but we'll see. Um, I'll be screaming that out when we have more information. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Hope you found this useful and enjoyable. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.